Hello and uh, welcome back to the channel. So today I'll be discussing about the modeling of deterministic and stochastic models. Now the reason that I've chosen this topic is because um, majority of the modeling that you see is basically done in a deterministic way. Now the issue with a deterministic model is that it doesn't actually predict a stochastic, it doesn't actually predict a realistic uh, model so to say. So it doesn't actually give you, it, it won't give you the realistic results that you actually want to obtain. It will give you an idealistic result that uh, the model assumes that this might happen at the optimum conditions provided. So I uh, will be discussing about how what is the basic difference between a deterministic and a stochastic model and how can you actually code for it. So please do uh, stay till the end of the video to watch uh, the coding aspect as well. So uh, here uh, basically two type of graphs are there, a gating variable uh, of a deterministic as well as stochastic. Now this gating variable is of the uh, neural model. So in a neuron, when the action potential is conducted, that, that action potential has a typical curve that is a spike that is obtained. And that action potential is caused because of the opening and closing of the sodium and potassium gates. That is when the depolarization happens or the repolarization happens or hyperpolarization happens. So all those is because of the kinetics of the sodium and potassium channels. But the sodium and potassium channel itself uh, has the kinetics which is governed by the individual gating variables. And for example, M, the M and H variable is of the sodium channel and N is for the potassium channel. And these are still defined by a certain set of differential equations. So here we can see this is a gating variable that is being obtained. Now here, uh, considering this particular curve, you see it's a very smoothened curve that you won't see much deviations in this curve that is being obtained. It's a very smooth curve. So the uh, basic definition of a deterministic model is that let's say, for example, consider this, there are 40 students in a class and I ask them to add 2 plus 2 and give me the results, right? So everyone will give me 40. Uh, and so everyone will give me, uh, sorry, not 40. So everyone will give me the result of 4, right? Uh, from the 40 students. Now, that is what a deterministic model is. That is for a defined input to a model, you will get a certain output, which will not vary if you do it thousand number of times. Let's say if I increase the number of students from 40 to 100 and if I ask those 100 students to add 2 plus 2, I will still be getting the same answer that is 4, right? So that is what a deterministic model is. That is for a defined input, you will get a certain defined output. So that's why you every time you run the simulation, you will get the same points and when you curve it out, you will get something called as a, this smooth type of curve. But that doesn't happen in a stochastic model. What happens in a stochastic model is, now let's say uh, you have to assume it in a realistic way. So what we do is that let's say in a class of 40 students, some of them will be good at maths, some of them might not be good at maths, and some of them will be in between those two categories. And if I ask these students to add 2 plus 2, those who are good at maths will be giving me the result of 4. Those who are not good at maths will give me, let's say, 3.5 or 3.6 or 4.5 or 4.3. And those who are in between will give me the answer which is close to that of 4, let's say 3.99 or 4.01 or 4.03, something like that, right? So uh, we see that for a defined input, that is the input was uh, constant or common for everyone, that is 2 plus 2. But the output that we obtained was different. It was not the same because we have to consider the real situation, real scenario as well. And that is what happens in a stochastic model. That is, the pattern is almost same. So if you look at the curve of this, so let's look at this blue curve, uh, that is for M subunit. So here's, you see the pattern is almost the same, but uh, the curve is not smooth. There is variability inside that. And this variability is also known in terms of uh, uh, computational system. We call it as noise or more commonly as Gaussian noises, which are there in the system, which causes the stochasticity to arise. So that's why we can say that deterministic model is more of an idealistic model. That will, it will provide you an ideal scenario of what uh, the output might be at optimum conditions. But a stochastic model will provide you a realistic model. And we can predict how our model is behaving or how accurate our model is by looking at the pattern. So if we look at the pattern here and if we see that our stochastic model is uh, behaving almost as that of the deterministic model or as close as that of the deterministic model, then we can say that our stochastic model is pretty much accurate because it is giving me the output that is considered to be obtained when in optimum conditions are given. So that's how you actually contemplate your stochastic model and model. Now, there are various kind of algorithms that uh, people use to simulate their model. For example, there is Euler integration method or RK method or stochastic simulation algorithm. But a major algorithm for stochastic model is known as what is known as a Gillespie algorithm. 
So Gillespie algorithm, so I won't be defining the algorithm here. If you guys want, I can do a different video for that. I'll just be defining the steps that are involved in using a Gillespie algorithm. So the very first step is to select any random number. So we select two random numbers. And the reason to select two random numbers is because uh, we this Gillespie algorithm is based on a probabilistic model. So and total stochastic model is actually based on a probabilistic model. So what we do in Gillespie algorithm is that we actually uh, predict which reaction will happen at a certain interval of time. So what happens in a deterministic model is that when you simulate your model for let's say 100 milliseconds, the model uh, the model runs for 100 milliseconds, it stores the value and then it will give you the final output. But what happens in Gillespie algorithm is that if you simulate your model for 100 milliseconds, the model will store the value for every millisecond. Like uh, when the uh, uh, simulation starts off at one millisecond, it will store the value. It will update the time and then it uh, it will uh, go to the next step that is two millisecond. It will again store the value, update the time, go to the next step, and it will provide you the answer at each and every millisecond. So that's why it's more accurate in that sense, but computationally a bit slow because it involves much time to record the answers. So what we do is that we select any two random variable numbers, and the probability being that we select the first random number is that we select a uniform distribution, let's say from zero to one, and we select any random number, let's say 0.5, right? And we define a set of propensity. So what is propensity? Propensity is nothing but let's say there are there is a two system model, uh, A is getting converted to B with a particular reaction constant K. So the reaction constant multiplied by the substrate concentration is known as the propensity. Right. So what we do is that we define propensity here. It, we write it as a zero, and we calculate tau. That is a time according to this formula, and then we update the time, and then we select the reaction. So uh, how do we select the reaction? Is that we se uh, select a uniform distribution of say zero and one, and we select a, any random number, let's say 0.5, and we uh, find the probability that if my propensity is less than, and then we select another random number that is R2, and we multiply it with that of the propensity, total propensity A0, and I predict that if my second random variable number is less than the multiplied probability, then my substrate will be decreasing by one, and my product will be increasing by one. So here, two uh, options can happen. If my second random number is less than the total propensity, then the reaction will proceed into forward direction, and in that sense, the X will decrease by one, and Y will increase by one. But in the other case, uh, X will increase by one or Y will decrease by one and then ultimately we calculate the time and then we update the system and we uh, repeat the same steps again and again until the time is until the T. So let's say if uh, I run the, my simulation for 100 milliseconds, so until the simulation time uh, exceeds 100 milliseconds, then the system will automatically break out of it. So if it goes, it will go to 100 milliseconds and once it goes to 101 milliseconds, my conditions were for 100 milliseconds. So model will break out of the system and I will get the final output. So let's consider a very simple chemical reaction uh, from uh, A, that is A is getting converted to B with a reaction constant of 0.1 and my initial conditions are Na is 100 and uh, population of uh, molecule of A is 100 and population of B is 0. So I'll show you how to actually code for it. So I'll start off with uh, my Jupyter notebook and uh, last time I used Google Collaborator but that was like if you have internet access you can use that but if you don't have any internet access you can use the Jupyter notebook to simulate. So I'll do it in two ways, first orient and then is the stochastic model. So uh, orient, uh, import numpy as np. Uh, I'll be doing it in the same way as I did in the last video. Then for plotting purpose, import uh, matplotlib.pyplot as a plt. And from scipy.integrate import orient. Give the initial value, initial population of uh, molecular A is 100. B is uh, 0 and the reaction constant is 0 0.1. Then we define our function uh, that is a uh, reaction and give two uh, inputs y and t. We define at an array and p dot 0, 2, and then uh, we have to also define the uh, input uh, the population in the arrays that is n will be the zeroth element of y array and nb will be the first element of y, th y array. Then the differential equation dy0 is equal to negative k times Na. So this k times N is basically a propensity and negative because the population, because it's a unimolecular reaction. So number of A will decrease as the reaction proceeds in forward direction. And dy1 will be equal to k times Na. And I will return my dy. I will simulate it for let's say np dot arrange uh, 0.0 to 100 milliseconds with time step of 0.01 and give the initial value as Na and Nb and uh, we are solving it Odeon uh, in my model that is reaction y0 initial values and time t 
then I will plot it plt dot plot t and zero. Let's give it a color of red and let's uh, label it as a. Then plt dot plot t solution one and let's give the color green and label it as b. Then plt dot uh, x label will be our time in milliseconds and plt dot y label uh, will be our concentration plt dot uh, legend and plt dot So uh, whenever you run uh, your Jupyter system, the first time it runs, it will give you a figure size. So if this comes, that means your uh, output is there. But the first time it runs, it do, don't actually give you the output. So you have to run it again to get the curve. So here you see, as the time proceeds in forward direction, the number of molecules of A decreases because we started off with uh, red is A and green is B. So we started off with A as 100 molecule and we started off B with zero molecule. So if, because it's a unimolecular system, so as uh, the time progresses further, the A number of molecules of A is decreasing with respect to time and number of molecules of B is increasing with respect to time. And there will be there will come a time when the number of molecules will be zero and number of molecules of B will be 100. So like all the uh, substrates are getting converted into product. Now, if you look at the curve, so it's a pre pretty smooth curve, right? There's no variability in it as compared to that of the stochastic model because it's a deterministic model. Now let's uh, do a stochastic version of this one and see how the graph comes. So import uh, numpy as np, import and import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Now I won't be calling odient function here because I will be using Gillespie algorithm for it. So I don't want odient function. So I'll just define Na will be equal to 100. Let's say 100 molecule. Nb will be equal to 0. And I have to simulate, let's say I do a thousand iterations for it. And uh, initially the time will be 0. Right? So now I have to define an array. Now why the array? Because uh, when I will be plotting with respect to time, my molecule. So here you see when I have defined my time as a 100 millisecond. But here what I have done is that I have done it as 1000 uh, iterations and because my Gillespie algorithm also updates the time as well as the reaction system, so it will have to store those values every time in the array. So that's why I have to define the array for both time as well as the molecules. So for time array, I have given it, uh, so I defined the time array. Now let's say molecule A and molecule uh, B. So I've also defined an array for molecule A as well as B uh, in which the Final, as the system keeps updating itself, the number of molecules of A and B will be stored in this particular uh, array. Now I will be giving condition while true. So considering that everything initially is true. So my first condition if, is if Na equals to equals to zero, that means if my number of molecules of A becomes zero, then the system will break, obviously, because then not any substrate will be left to get converted into product, right? So it, the system will break. So this is my first condition. Now I will be defining my uh, reaction uh, constant that is 0 0.1 and now I have to define my propensity. So let's uh, let's say I give the propensity value as W and it will be K times uh, Na that is the propensity right. So uh, and now what I have to do I have to define tau. So tau will be so now there are two ways you can define tau. So the first way is that we saw in the formula that is 1 upon A0 into log of 1 upon R1. Otherwise, when you solve that particular equation, you can actually derive a mathematical definition for it. And you can say that it, uh, and when you differentiate and you, when you solve the differential equation, you will get something like np dot log np dot random dot uniform 0 1. So now uh, sometimes uh, people update this particular step. They can use either use a random number, but I'm using a uniform number because actually what we do is that we select a uniform number from zero to one, and then we select a random number in between that. So n minus np dot log np dot random dot uniform zero one divided by my propensity that is w, and then I will update my time. So time will be equal to t equals to plus equals to tau. So this plus equals to means that t is equal to t plus tau, and that's why uh, we write it in the short form as plus equals to Tau, right and then we select our second uh, random number that is r will be equal to np dot random dot and then and we multiply it with my propensity and now we'll be giving my condition that if my r is less than w the number of molecules of a will decrease by one and number of molecules of b will increase by one so na minus equals to one is na is equal to na minus one 
and nb plus equals to 1 is nb equals to nb plus 1. So that is how we write. Now this is where my step is complete. Now I have to append my time. Now uh, I have to store the values of time as well, right? So time dot append t. So what it will do is that it will append function actually adds the value. So whatever t is now here with me, it will add the value in it and then it will repeat the same step again. And similarly, uh, I will also update my molecule. So molecule underscore a dot append will be na because whatever the value of na will be there, it will store in the uh, array of molecule a and molecule underscore b dot append will be nb. So whatever value of nb will be there, number of molecules of b, it will get stored in molecule b. And then I have to give my second condition that if my t is more than t, that is if my simulation time is more than the given condition, then the system will break, right? So this is where my uh, solution has been done. Now I have to plot it. So plt dot plot time molecule underscore a let's give it a red color and let's label it as a similarly plt dot plot time molecule underscore b and let's give it a green color and label it as b plt dot x uh, label will be our time in milliseconds plt dot uh, y label will be our concentration plt dot legend and plt dot so you see we get the same curve but this time a bit of stochasticity is involved in it you see the curve is not as smooth as it was before so this is how you actually do the stochasticity or make the model become a more realistic version of it because every time what happens is that here the system is updating itself so it selects from here it selects a random number and then sees at which particular reaction uh, will occur or not in the next step then it uh, solves it according to this particular formula here it will store the values and it will repeat it again and once my simulation time is more than the defined time interval the system will break out of it and it will store it otherwise if this reaches first or if this reaches first my model will break according to it. So if my number of molecules of A becomes zero first, then the, molecule, uh, then the system will break out of it. If my uh, simulation time becomes more than that of the given time, then my system breaks out of the loop. So this is how you actually run a deterministic and a stochastic model. If you guys want, I can do it for a more complex, but this is what was for a very simple reaction, a simple unimolecular reaction. If you guys want, I can do it for a bimolecular system reaction whereby a two-way two -way reaction is happening, like it's a forward as well as a backward reaction. And even I can do it for a more complex reaction such as a neural uh, model whereby action potential is being conducted, how you actually uh, develop a neural model if you want that, I can do a different video for that. So if you guys want that, you can comment down in my video. And uh, so that was for it today. So uh, thank you very much uh, for watching the video and please uh, like it, share the video and subscribe to my channel. And if you guys have any questions regarding it, you can uh, ask it and I hope I can answer that as well. So. Thank you very much.